20% of the, the bad stuff in your heart and your arteries and your body and your brain and your kidneys is because of the high sugar, but 80% because of the high insulin. I told you about sugar being the bad boy. What's the second worst bad boy? Vegetable seed oils. Today, we're going to talk about coronary artery disease in South Asians. Now, this is a talk that not just for South Asians, it's for everybody. Because if you look at the traditional risk factors, they're 80% of the risk factors apply to just about everybody. But South Asians, there's something more, there's something funny about them. That extra, you know, there's other 20% risk factors which we just can't put our finger on. Why do South Asians have so much coronary artery disease? So let's go right into that. And the prevalence of heart disease in South Asians is extremely high. In non-Asians, in the United States, it's 2.5% CAD risk. South Asians, 7.5, three times more. Yet we think that we are protected, that we Indians, we don't have a problem. People from South India don't have a problem. People from Pakistan, Bangladesh, we don't have a problem. Ah, we're fine, you know. We, we are three times more at risk than the average person in the United States. And this is not just in the UK, USA, by the way. It's in the UK, South Africa, Trinidad, Fiji, Australia, wherever you go. So there's a problem. What is this problem? So there's a threefold increase in heart disease in South Asia in India also. So if you look at Indians in India, they also have a problem. Right now, we are the number one in the world for coronary artery disease and diabetes. But we think that we can have constantly elevated insulin levels because we're eating every two, three hours and we're eating processed foods and refined foods and then you expect the body to respond with insulin. Well, you'll make insulin, but your body will not respond to it. So what happens as the years go by, you start having to make a gallon of insulin at each meal. So then the question really you should be asking me is that then dark, but the sugar is under good control. Control. So what's wrong with that? Well, you missed the boat. All of us missed the boat. The doctors missed the boat. It's not the sugar that's hurting you so much. 20% of the, the bad stuff in your heart and your arteries and your body and your brain and your kidneys is because of the high sugar, but 80% because of the high insulin. So what happens is that it's the hyperinsulinemia that's hurting your arteries, that's paralyzing your arteries, causing calcification of your arteries, causing hardening of your arteries. So let's keep talking more here. The prevalence of diabetes in US 5.3. India, 12 to 14 percent because India has changed the way it eats. Everything is now refined. Everything is made out of flour. Everything is ready-made and you can eat all this busu. What you call busu? What you call it? Uh, chevra and, and gantias and all these things that you find and say, oh yeah, this is great stuff. I'm inviting my best friend. I love you, my friend. Yeah, eat this. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah. And then if you look at these people, they have high blood pressure, they have high triglyceride, they have low HDL. So when I look at that, I already know that they have hyperinsulinemia. So 50 percent of South Asians are vegetarians. Wait a sec. Then why do they have such a high incidence of corn? Oh yeah, it's the meat. Yeah, you know, meat, red meat. That's another lie that you've all been taught. Red meat causes coronary artery. Then explain to me, sir, why if 50% of the population, in fact, in some places it's even more in India, it's 80% in certain areas of India, are vegetarians, how come they have such a high incidence of coronary artery disease? It's not nothing to do with red meat and chicken. It's nothing to do with that. It's to do with sugar. What's the biggest poison in the world? Sugar. So this is all lies. Red meat. No, you. Can, I don't mind red meat, but you got to eat grass fish finished red meat. So it contains all the vitamin K2 and none of the omega-6s in it. You see now the, the meat you buy today is manufactured because they're eating corn. Well, since when are cows supposed to eat corn? And then you give them antibiotics because the corn rots in the stomach. They have four stomachs. They're supposed to re you know, be ruminants, right? But they can't because they're corn. It starts rotting and then they die. So you have to give them antibiotics to kill all the bad bacteria in the gut. And then those bacteria, uh, then all those antibiotics get into your bloodstream and then you get dysbiosis. And then you wonder why you all have dysbiosis and why you got so many antibiotics going on in your colon, killing those poor bacteria in your gut, which should be actually helping you. Do you see the vicious cycle here? So I don't mind me, and all my studies clearly show that. But make sure it's grass finished, natural, without that omega-6 corn oil. Oh no, but we got fields and fields of corn for this purpose. 80% of the corn is fed to animals, not even humans. But it gets to you through the fat. And it's all omega-6. That brings me to oil, because since we are going to be limited in time, let me just jump right into it. What did Indians do? What did they all do? They all started eating vegetable oils. Because Ansel Keys came out in 1957 and said, oh yeah, animal fat is bad for you, you know. So all butter went out through the door, ghee went out through the door, and we went to vegetable seed oils. And hence, we have this epidemic also of coronary artery disease. So I told you about sugar being the bad boy. What's the second worst bad boy? Vegetable seed oils. So why do they call it vegetable seed oils? Because they've bamboozled you again. There's no oil in vegetables, but they call it vegetable seed oil because it sounds so healthy. You know, it's vegetable <laughs> seed oil. It's so good. It's good for you. Vegetable seed oil. My teacher said something about vegetables, right? So I'll have that oil. Craziness going on. So the 
festivals here. So they went to Vanaspati Ghee. That's festival ghee in India. So basically they called it ghee, but they called it Vanaspati Ghee. So this is vegetable seed oils. It contain a whole lot of omega-6 in it and omega-9, which is very pro-inflammatory. If you saw how they make that oil, you won't touch it. If you saw how they make it in that factory, I tell you, you know, all the solvents they use, all the chemicals they use, the coloring, the deodorizing and everything else. And now it looks nice and you know, golden red. So nice, you know, golden color. Yeah, sunflower seed oil, safflower oil, canola oil, corn oil, soy oil. And you go to the restaurants and they cook everything in that oil. And it's, you know, you think it's just fine. They must have used the best quality oil, you know. Yeah. They just poisoned your food for you. Sweet poison. No vegetable seed oils. Vegetable seed oils will kill you. They cause lots of problems with the body. So what they cause is oxidation because they're polyunsaturated. Polyunsaturated means they're bonds, hydrogen bonds that are unsaturated. So what happens that there are other molecules that can stick to it. Saturated fats, there's nothing they can interact with. You take a piece of ghee and you leave it here, nothing's going to happen to it. It will not go rancid. For months and months, it won't go rancid. But if you take vegetable seed oils, it'll get rancid within a matter of a day or two. And in order for it not to go there, they put preservatives in it. No vegetable. You want to you wanna put some oil? You put a piece of butter in there. Or better still, is pure ghee. That's the thing you got to use. So I have a whole lecture on YouTube called The Fat Lies. And it talks about the chemical structures of oils and ghee and, and does a full, ex and then all the studies that have been done showing that people who eat saturated fats, they don't get coronary artery disease. Those who eat polyunsaturated fats get coronary artery disease and cancer. So they blame saturated fats, vegetarians and non-vegetarians. Everyone started consuming vegetable seeds. So we moved away from coconut oil. We moved away from from ghee and we started consuming vegetable seed oils and this is what caused a whole new problem for us. So look at the global consumption of vegetable oils. Massive. We've never consumed so much vegetable oil <laughs> in our life. Peanut oil, cottonseed oil, sunflower, corn oil, canola oil, soybean oil, palm oil. So you say, oh yeah, I come home and I like to eat some nuts. So I noticed, I only just noticed it not so many years ago. It's so beautiful. Walnuts, pecans and all these things. But when I lit at the bottom, roasted in sunflower seed oil. I stopped it. So now I buy the raw nuts and I'd rather just eat the raw nuts without all that oil in it because they're just ruining it. Now my nuts have a lot of good oil in it. Nuts are very healthy. They have good oil in it, but not when they are roasted in all that junk. So be careful what you do and read those little, it, did it have a label? Yeah, box of the, the can of nuts, mixed nuts has a label on it. Well, I should have already known. So risk factors. So also in India, what happened is that vegetarian and non-vegetarian, we started consuming too much carbs, way too much carbs and they're all processed carbs. So look what I'm going to say. We Wheat flour. Wheat flour is not something we should all be consuming. Your great grandfathers used to have millet and sorghum, not wheat. Remember, wheat came in the last one millisecond in your evolution. How can this body handle wheat when it only came in the last one millisecond of your entire ancestral teleological history as a Homo sapien? Doesn't make sense. And then chick chick pea flour. Oh yeah, this is healthy. Chick pea flour, vegetable seed oils, then sugars and sweets. So as we be went to the cities, oh, I got a job now. You know, I'm a software engineer engineer now. I deserve to eat more sweets and sugars. And every time my friends come, go to the wedding and all this, doesn't matter. I still bring the mitai home and I eat every day a piece of sweet. And I love this stuff. My best friends come, I give them some sweets and someone's daughter's getting married. It's sweet. Someone dies, I give them larvas as well. Any occasion, here it is. Go for it. I mean, this is what we did. But why? Because I can afford it now. Just think about it. Standard of living has gone up. I can afford it now. So I can afford some nice poison now. I can afford the poison. This is exactly what's happening. But if you live to and eat like a poor man and eat the way your not grandfather, but your great grandfather ate or grand, great grandmother ate, you will live long, of course, but you will live healthy. You see, it's not lifespan. It's the health span. Look at Indians. They want to live into the 90s. But after 70, they get dementia. They get coronary artery disease. They get peripheral vascular disease. They get bad eyes. The joints are all gone. The common thing is inflammation. So you, you think all these joint problems are, are just all old age, you know? Well, you never worked your joints that hard. It's not that. It's because you have inflammation in your body. That's why your hips are giving out and your knees are giving out and your shoulders are giving out. It's inflammation. We know that now. So if you look at inflammation in the body, inflammation, what is inflammation? It's inflamed against something that's foreign to it. What's foreign to it? To this body. Everything you're putting inside it is foreign. Your biggest problem is your stomach, your gut, because that is where the border is. That is the difference between you and the outside world. It's not the skin. 
skin and what's outside it is between that you're a hollow tube. There's a tube that goes all the way through. Everything that's in that tube is the difference when your gut has to decide what's coming in, what's going out, what's friends, what's not friends. When it's breached, am I going to act against this? Am I not going to act against this? And that's what causes inflammation.